So have you heard that there are 3,000 screaming fans, maybe more, that have mm -hmm. been waiting since 4 a.m.? I've heard they've come from surrounding states just to see you. I know. I don't know what they expect. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does it make you feel? How do you prepare yourself for something like that? You just... I don't. Every single time I have a massive panic attack when I'm like walking up to the thing. I mean, and I also doing the signings and things because you have to rush through everything mm. so much. I just feel like, I just feel terrible every single day because people have queued up since, since 4 o'clock in the morning. I mean, you have like five seconds. It's like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and that's it. That's the, that's the reason they queued up. It's like, oh, sorry. Like, and I have no control over anything. So I don't know. I feel quite bad half the time. Oh. <laughs> And yesterday, actually, in San Francisco, they had to cancel the event mm -hmm. because of crowd control. Mm -hmm. And then they, re they did do it in the end, though. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, and it was still pretty crazy then. I think everybody came back. I didn't realize I was, but then they said it was canceled, so the majority of people would go away, mm. um, I think. Mm. I shouldn't really be saying all these well, secrets. Well, we won't put that part in. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put that part in. Um, so then, what is the phenomenon? As you see it, what do you see the phenomenon is? No, I think it's, I think just it's quite unique the book, and uh, it's a very addictive thing, and so, and, and it's also you can tell your friends about it, and, you, and, and guarantee that they'll enjoy it. Mm. I think so. That's the, uh, it's another help. It's not a very specific. It's it's you can you can tell that everyone will like it, um, and so everyone goes, and it's become a kind of cult now. So everyone's like, oh, have you read Twilight? There's always someone on. I saw someone on the train in New York. It was really bizarre. I was in the same carriage, and someone said about a uh, someone was reading a book, and they gave their bookmark. Someone else came up with their Twilight bookmark, and they were both like thirty-five-year-old women. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, okay. And I was sitting at the other end of the carriage, and they're like, you read this? <laughs> and I, it's crazy. So, can you walk amongst us? I mean, do, are people recognizing you now? Not quite yet, or in some cities in LA, they do quite a lot. I was in New York, and hardly anyone did though. And then. Uh, in San Francisco, everyone was. So I mean, it's really strange how, how, you know, certain types of city, uh, people are expecting you. <laughs> yeah. And so will you, do you think, adopt kind of a camouflage? Will you sort of do a, you know, disguise to? Not really. I mean, I don't know. Most people, I guess fans of books are generally quite polite mm. and nice. And so whenever they come up, and I, half the time I'm in these cities, I don't know anyone. And so <laughs> it's quite nice when someone comes up to you. <laughs> but yeah, it's quite nice. And you know, I was asking my, my young friends what they thought so much of the appeal was. And really the fact that this is an old fashioned romance, isn't it? It's really mm -hmm. old school. It's it's proper and it's it's I don't want to say chaste, but it's really old fashioned, isn't it? Yeah. Well it, it's it's a it's a relationship where people have to work mm -hmm. rather than uh, and weirdly enough in this generation and people must really want that <laughs> again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I think people are sick of things being so easy and really like having like Everything's kind of cheap, mm -hmm. and so uh, I think I think that's one of the appeals of it. Yeah, and had you been a fan of the books? I I read them after my audition, um, and I read them wanting to do the book. I already wanted to do it before I'd even read them, I, and I wouldn't even even cared what the uh, what the books were like. I liked Chris and I liked Catherine, and I liked how the audition went. So uh, I read them just so I could just so I could send an email to Catherine and say like. I know all this stuff about <laughs> I am Edward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and true story, you actually had not even had a driver's license before, and then you mm. had to do stunt driving. Yeah. Wow. I know, very, very, yeah, that was funny. I, did, I, I, I was in a car, f that really scares me about how people can get driver's licenses as well, because I got it in about 10 hours, <laughs> an international driver's license. I'd never driven a car before in my entire life. So uh, unless I'm some spectacularly <laughs> good driver, which I very much doubt. But yeah, I was doing I was doing stunt driving the day I the day I passed my test. Unbelievable! Because you're doing spin outs and mm. fast acceleration, and that must have been thrilling. Or was it scary? It was terrifying. I <laughs> like I didn't really know how to do it half the time. I, I think I did it a few times and kept messing it up. And it's actually really dangerous. So uh, I, and a, a guy who looked nothing like me actually did it in the end because <laughs> I think the producers got a little bit terrified. And some of the high wire work was kind of like Jet Li. I mean, it was very sort of that Asian mm -hmm. high wire special effects, fabulous. Definitely, it was it was uh, Jackie Chan's stunt coordinator who, who who did all the stunts and the wire work. So in a lot of ways, yeah, a lot of it's like a kung fu movie. Strangely enough, for Twilight, you would never <laughs> have thought. Like. And so you know, I, I know we talked about this before, but we'll talk about it again. When you when you 
get involved in a project like this, you know it's pretty much a franchise situation, so there'll be more. Mm. You know, it's not just a one one film deal. Mm. Um, for an actor, is that exciting for you to know, like, well, I know I've got a job, <laughs> you know, in a few months or whatever, or whenever they decide to shoot again in a year or so? Yeah, it's quite good for that. I mean, I don't think anybody really knew if we were going to do, uh, they still don't know if we're going to do the, the sequels. Um, but I mean, I guess, I guess it's nice to do like a saga. I mean, it's, it's, especially one which becomes so huge. It's not like doing a TV series or something. It's like, it's an event movie now. So uh, if it does, if it does well, you know, it's quite interesting. It's a, it is a saga in the absolute essence of the word. Yeah. And I understand because you're up in a remote part of Oregon, it very, you know, you all bonded. You and Chris in particular have such a strong chemistry on camera that just pops off the screen. Yeah. Did you feel that when you first met? Yeah, kind of. We're kind of competitive people and so and uh, and so we were kind of there was definitely something and, and we kind of bonded over a lot of stuff and then so the com competition instead of going against each other was against everybody else. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think that's kind of yeah, there's definitely some kind of link. And I think it works you're both smart. You know, yeah. you're both smart actors. You even told me you were considering getting out of acting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then this came up. Just because it's, it's, it's very frustrating when you kind of, uh, the, just the casting process. I mean, I, I'm obviously every actor thinks that, but I'm, I'm not too, uh, I'm not like one of those actors who thinks, you know, I'll die if I'm not doing it. Mm. I think if I'm doing a job, then I think I have to do it to the best of my ability. But um, I think there are other things which I, which I could do. <laughs> So, you know, I don't really want to sell anything too much. We'll stay Edward for a while, all right? <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Great Thank job. Thanks so much.